Hello and welcome to this Total War Warhammer 2 Let's Play for the High Elves. This custom battle takes place in the stunning landscape of mosquito swamps in the heart of Lustria, one of the few ritual sites the four races will be fighting over in order to gain control of the Vortex. Now it's worth mentioning that everything you see in this battle today is a work in progress, so some visuals and stats are placeholder and are subject to tweaking and balancing. Now moving on to our army we have the Frostheart Phoenix, a highly armoured flying unit that causes a chilling effect to those around it, slowing them down and making them weaker. Beneath we have the Swordmasters of Hoeth. As their name suggests, they are extremely skilled infantry that can actually deflect incoming missile fire by slashing it out of the air. A unit some may recognise from the Fallen Gates battle is the Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. Interestingly, this is the only piece of artillery available to the High Elves, but it's very flexible, carrying multiple types of ammunition suitable for both infantry and large units. Moving on now to the Spearmen, these are a High Elf player's first line of defence. They're relatively cheap, surprisingly quick to move around, and great against large foes. Now we have heard some of the community's concerns regarding shield patterns and colours, so I wanted to show a snippet of some of the other High Elf factions in the game. Of course, these are all subject to tweaking, so please keep the feedback coming. Now at the head of our army we have one of the most skilled warriors in all of Ulthuan, the legendary Lord Tyrion and his prized mount Malahandir. Now at his back we have the Lothran Seaguard, a very powerful and flexible unit because they have good armour to protect from missiles, spears to defend against cavalry, and bows to attack at range. Here we have the much younger Flamespire Phoenix, whose embers still shine bright. The Flamespire is more vulnerable to missile fire, but can heal itself when it's damaged and drop fire on enemies below it. Protecting the bird is the Phoenix Guard, a super powerful halberd infantry unit that is absolutely devastating to any large foe they encounter. And lastly, onto my favourite high elf unit, the Dragon Princes. These are the highest tier of cavalry available. The entitled princes wear dragon armour, protecting them against any fire attacks and just making them look badass, obviously. Alright, so I think we're just about ready to start the battle. If we turn back on the UI, you can see all of the lovely units at my disposal. We have a fairly diverse army, also carrying a High Elf Mage and a Lore Master of Hoeth, who have some powerful magic at their disposal. Now before we start, I'm just going to turn on Guard Mode for some of my Spearmen here, and make sure Skirmish Mode is off for my Missile units. I also forgot to mention I have two cavalry units on my right flank. We've got the Illyrian Reaver Archers, who are obviously missile cavalry, and the Silver Helms with shields, which are kind of a more standard melee cavalry. Alright, I think we've waited long enough. Let's begin the battle. There are a few corrections I want to make. My artillery could do with having some protection from the front, so we'll shift our spearmen in front of them and fill the gap with the Phoenix Guard. Today it's Lord Mazda Mundi on his famed Mount Zlack and his horde of lizardmen who want to take back the mosquito swamps for himself. He has some proud looking croxigors at his front, flanked with the blessed pterodons using fire leech bolas. No doubt they'll make this a very tough fight. Now because he's moving pretty slow and has a thick bulk of infantry at his head, I'm going to switch to the multi-shot round for my artillery, as it has much greater anti-infantry capabilities versus the standard round, which is meant for large foes. He's got a little while to go yet before he's in range. Looks like he's pushing up some of his cavalry ahead of the main army though, perhaps scouting the woods out or looking to hide there himself. It's a unit of horned ones, an extremely rare and powerful cavalry unit. Let's move up our Dragon Princes to mirror what Lord Mazda Mundi is doing. Look at how cool these guys are. They walk with such arrogance. I love it. Oh, that horn means they're in range. Nice. Here we go. Now the anti-infantry shot isn't going to do much against the horned ones, but it might push them out of the forest. Our cavalry is pushing up to meet the threat, though the silver helms would have a tough time against the horned ones. I'm going to shift a spearman unit over to help, and then shift another sword unit in front of the artillery. Now it's worth mentioning also that I'll be cutting between the raw gameplay footage and the replay gameplay footage, so you can get both a zoomed out tactical look at the battle, and a close up cinematic look at the units. And I'll try to be quiet so you can soak in the atmosphere during these moments too. So 
So as Mazda Mundi is an insanely powerful magic user, at the first sign of damage he has cast Apotheosis, regenerating the hit points of his nearby units that are being attacked. A pretty clever move, as long as the individuals don't die, he can just keep healing them. Alright, we've got some Pterodons moving on my right, so I'll move out the good old Frosty to push them back. Dragon Princes are about to engage some Cold One Riders now. This should be an easy fight, but they are backed up with some extra Pterodons. Alright, it's time to switch to the standard shot and fire on that Feral Carnosaur that's coming into range. I don't care how much charge defense my Spearmen have, that thing's gonna hit like a wrecking ball into my front line. Time to pull Frosty back, can't really see how he's doing out there, and it looks like he's being fired on. And yep, the Horned Ones have engaged my helms on the right, let's push spears on them. Ah, it was the cheeky chameleon skinks lurking in the woods, firing on my Frostheart Phoenix. Sneaky sneaky. Now that big blue shield over to the left is buffing their leadership in there and protecting them from spells. I think it's the shield of the old ones. Great charge defense, guys. Well done. Uh, let's get Tyrion to help. Oh crap, Mazda Mundi's Ruination of Cities hit both of our lines. Let's pull Tyrion out of that. It's an omnidirectional wind spell, so it's pretty hazardous. You never really know which way it's going to go. Well, you're not the only one who can play with wind spells. We've got some wind spells too. Looks like he's using banishments on me, so we're going to have to move our Phoenix. Oh. Just missed the Croxigors, but it did some good damage even so. Right, let's turn up the heat. There's a big group here, so we're going to throw down the Tempest Vortex to disrupt them. Guard your ears. Oh yeah, now this is actually great at ensnaring flying units, but it does decent damage on the ground too. Looks like he's healing more units. Let's push the cavalry out to the chameleons. Looks like we've got a little bit of a gap we can exploit here. The pterodons are crushing my artillery. Let's get our missiles to take down that carnosaur. It's causing me huge problems. And get our artillery to focus on Mazda Mundi. not going to be a good day for that guy. Alright, it's Tag Team Phoenix time. Father and Son, Fire and Ice. That Wake of Fire ability is so powerful if timed correctly, and combined with the debuff from the Frost Heart, the two phoenixes work so well together. Our Dragon Princes have taken quite a bit of damage, but we'll send them back into this chunk of units here, and make another pass with the Flamespire Phoenix. Right, we've finally gotten rid of the Carno. Let's focus on Mazda Monday now and buff our Winds of Magic. Now at this stage of a battle, things can get a little bit hectic. Now of course you can pause it to issue orders, but we don't do that here at Total War. We can use Hand of Glory. It's pretty much made for the Lutheran Sea Guard as it buffs reload and melee attacks, so these guys will be ready for anything. Let's buff our Winds of Magic to empower our Phoenixes again. Ugh, that's so annoying. Master Monday is called Banishment again, which means I'll have to move my archers, effectively disrupting my buff.
I think we've got him now though. Battle is turning in my favour. Yeah, just mopping up the remaining few now, dealing with the stragglers. Psh, look at him run away, the absolute coward. So at this stage we just need to chase down any stragglers, make sure that we keep them routing and don't let them come back. Alright, I think that's it. We've just about won. Mazamundi is going to run back to the swamp he crawled out of, and today belongs to the High Elves. So yeah, that's it for the battle and for the video. Let us know what you thought in the comments. Remember to subscribe to be the first to get exclusive Total War videos, and we'll see you very, very soon. Bye!